I need something, my tinnitus is annoying. Okay, uh, chapter four should be next to last. Previously on Alan Wake, I'm hunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the dark presence before it attacked me. That's gonna hurt. Alan, shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. There you go, Alan. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? what? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're, you're lying. You're suffering from various symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Faster. It's no okay, problem. Alan. Just let go. go. You're not gonna fool me with the men mental patient thing. If I'm a mental patient, why do I still have my jacket? I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. And of course, they took my guns the again. The door was locked. I was a prisoner here. Um... Okay, I'm Good leaving. Evening, Alan. I'm leaving. Are feeling better now? Leaving. You're calm? Leaving. Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. And what if I just want to leave? This corridor is for patients. Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. This way, Alan. Running away! Bear. Uh. Fine, let's play our game. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. No, there's a witch. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations. No, this Paranoid is Zane's thing. Unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. We go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying, but under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. Running away, I don't know well. Let's 
sundial. Beyond the shadow you settle for, there's a miracle illuminated. In the memory of a dear friend and poet. It's now... Um, it's... 11? I think it's 11. <laughs> okay. Nice lake, actually. Wait, is that Cauldron Lake? I think it it's is. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. Ah, I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good view. Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? Good hearing you have. Oh, uh, it's closed off. Crap. Why not play your game? It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the I illness. let him talk. All, Hartman I'm obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. But I, can't I dug my nails into the myself. palms of my hands to stay focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Yeah, animation on stealth has always been difficult. I think only Assassin's, since Assassin's Creed Let's go 3 it was really done well. Oh, here's the entrance the to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. Let me out. Let me out. The Creator's Dilemma, the engaging new book by Dr. Emil Hartman, the author of the best-selling Creative Flow, his groundbreaking techniques, engagement therapy, and the flow explained in his own words, now available in bookstores across the country. Mister, you should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared, but you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, Whoa. hello. I've painted you. Okay. I was just struck by inspiration Whoa. a couple of days ago. Dr. Hartman wanted me to paint landscapes, and that's what I was doing. But now I've been doing these things, a lot of them. The images just keep coming. Dr. Hartman likes them. He has them in his office. Yeah. He's very proud of me. Alan, he says I'm getting way. much better. I think I'm getting better. Definitely looks good. Why me? Why so dark? Uh, I guess I'd better start wrapping this up. The storm is almost here. Look at that.
Uh huh. You watch a lot of karate movies? Now, you might have noticed the typewriter in your room. Was so dark. As a part of the therapy, as soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. My rheumatism is <laughs> killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh, what a storm! These guys. I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. And Night springs. these two are the Anderson brothers, <laughs> Odin and Tor. They had a. How should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. <laughs> they even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They are well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. How do you explain the injury? How do you explain the injury? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. <laughs> Being crazy is a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash. But I kept it safe from these bastards. Is that a manuscript page? Thomas Zane's writing in the system. Feel the palms, taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Welcome to Condren Lake Lodge. We are here to give you the specialized help you need. However, please observe the following. Please ask friends and family to schedule visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy and all periods of creativity. Also, please respect your fellow patients' needs for privacy and personal space, especially when they're engaged by the creative process. Be patient. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems and they won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take the time you need. Bear in mind that you're voluntarily receiving treatment and has been specifically tailored for you. Engagement therapy and system method the flow works best when you're actively engaged in shaping them. If you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to voice them. Good thing he's not overreacting or anything. Well, he's the boss. I may need a hand here later on, Birch. The storm's bound to make you know who jumpy. You know how they get. Gotcha. The doc's got me looking after Wake here, but holler if they get too rowdy. I'll do that, Birch. Hey, Wake, why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? The typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Who uses a typewriter anymore? Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. 
I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants, and the story will come true. I love this segment. Uh, the hell? Hang on a moment. Yeah, search with my camera. It links to a YouTube video. It says Vision 3. It looks to be unlisted. Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. Hang on, hang on, how do I do this? Uh, how do I send it to myself? Oh, no, don't search. Compose to me this email with this address. And then, and then pause this, switch over to this. Yeah, God damn it. God damn it. Keep this, but refresh this and open this. A beginning, a primordial forest. <laughs> The colors of the fall. The mist. A caldera lake. Silence echoes. Loud. It's too late to hear the words. The man, naked, crawls to the shore. Like a birth? To say that would be a lie. Nothing like a birth. The opposite. He staggers to his feet. A carcass of a deer lies on the shore. Rotting amidst driftwood. The man is afraid, beside himself. Who is he? He doesn't himself know. Dark waves have washed it away. A blank page where this horror story will be written. He remembers darkness, feels the shadow pressing down on him, coming after him. He must get away. He runs to the forest, to a fate worse than death. But there's no link. It's unlisted. Remedy Entertainment. Alan Wake Vision 2. Nope, so I'll have to just find it elsewhere or something. I don't know. Can't miss the Thomas. Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. Hmm. The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Put that down. Burn. I need help. 
Hey, wait. You stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? I didn't know what the chaos was all about, <laughs> but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Where the hell did he get a damn hand? Come. I don't know. Here's a friendly poke from me, old Oh, afraid of the crazy brothers, are ya? Not so weak now, are we? Sinclair looked bad. That wasn't a love tap. Well, the crazy old fart really hit her hard. Fast, and if she was one of Hartman's uh, goons, uh, she uh, had it coming. Uh, uh, I could get the key to the office wing from Sinclair. I had to get to Hartman's office. He had taken Tom, all my manuscript pages. That's where he'd be keeping them. Come out and face the music, Perch. It's time to pay the piper. What battery low? Maybe you could come out and beat our wrinkled, adult, diapered asses, Perch. Since you're so tough, Perch. Hang on, why is this like this? Should work like this. Like this. Okay, maybe it doesn't. Really should turn off this whole thing when I'm playing. Don't know why it does that. Examine what? The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. Yeah. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me yeah. all along. Yeah. The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? <sighs> he's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent. He's... Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I... I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me, because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. He just... Alan doesn't really speak. Ooh. And the work, well, he's not writing. At all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. And I can't talk to him. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I don't know. I want to say... I look at you, and it's not you. Just some stranger who resembles you. Looking out from behind your eyes. And I don't like that guy much. And now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No. No. I've tried, but he's not listening. He's too deep in his own problems. Always going on about something else. I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose him. And we're not even talking anymore. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here. In the dark. Please help me, doctor, because I'm at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Hartman wasn't happy. Mott could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time. And he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Now I'm torn because with her voice, you might be crazy. Let me out of here! Hartman, do you hear me? I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to shreds! Harry! Seriously! 
Do you have any idea how much trouble you're in? I'm Barry. Ow! About time. Barry, man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no. The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, <laughs> that fed gave me a real hard time. But I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he yeah. let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman, that son of a bitch, who tells me you're here, and I should come pick you up. But when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... What's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. That teacher. Yeah. Yeah. That's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal. We gotta get going. These were all the pages I had on me. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back into the... Tell me one more lie, and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea... Hartman, shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just... Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. Watches Wake fall. Hartman followed the fall of Alan Wake with his binoculars. When the rider hit the water, he ordered Jack to take the boat to him. The spot was easy to see in the dark, even with all the extra lights in the boat. The flare floated and kept burning even in the water. Jack turned the radio louder as the engine sputtered. The music was rough and clanking, something the Anderson brothers would no doubt have enjoyed. But Hartman chose to ignore it. Wake was finally within his reach. The dark presence would be on me in a moment. I had to find a way out. Yep. Yep. Open it. Give me a flashlight. Ah. No. I needed light to get the possessed bookshelves Ow. out of my way. Well, I have the key to the generator, right? Nah. How? Don't throw things at me. God damn it. Am I stuck?
Wait, I gotta stop and read. Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front. And he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here, damaged in ways that were hard to describe, or worse. It was enough for Hartman to maintain creative control and provide direction, to be a producer. That was what most of these people were in need of anyway. Of course, suitable subjects were few and far in between. Point a flashlight at me. I found the car, but the gate's locked. You're gonna have to go through the hedge maze over there. Awesome. Barry, I don't have a light. Take this, Al. Okay. Oh God! Look at the house, Al. Look out! God damn it. Run, damn it. Oh, geez, Al. The house looks bad. Let's get out of here. Go to the car and wait. Really, freaking hedge maze. Oh, I can hear those evil guys moving around. Get to the car, turn it on, stay inside. Don't trust a meal. Interesting note. I stared at the Viking paraphernalia that littered the area, surrounding an unlikely centerpiece. A full-size stage complete with an impressive sound system with all the trimmings, including a dragon. It took a special kind of crazy to build something like this in a remote field. When the sky split open with a deafening boom and the music started blasting, it felt strangely appropriate. Oh, damn it, I'm stuck. Ah! You get two bills. 
nice in the morning, and then you'll be nice and calm. Oh. You get three girls in the evening. You sleep like a bear. Thomas. Now you give me the flare gun. The old god stage. Mott knew that Wake was smarter than him. Wake had more money, a beautiful wife, everything. And Hartman said Wake was important. That made him better than Mott. But Mott was calling the shots now. He'd expected Wake to whimper and grovel, but instead, he seemed willing to fight. Mott knew he'd gotten under Wake's skin. If only Mott actually had his wife. The thought made him shiver. Shotgun, shotgun. Now let's get serious. I dodging. I dodging. Just the right time to not have enough batteries. Okay, you... Okay, that's good enough. Stop hunting me! For the moment, Barry was just glad he had survived the fall. He had been separated from Al, and there was no easy way to climb back up. He told himself he'd be okay, okay in the gloomy forest at night. Uh -huh. He would just have to wait for a while for Al to find his way down. Barry turned when he heard the heavy footsteps and saw the movement. The man-shaped shadow lunged at him from the bushes, an axe held high. Barry screamed and threw up his hand. The world exploded.
Is that a box for me? Oh, you really should have. Forget the Thomas. Hartman watched as Wake's features slackened. The man was bullheaded, no doubt. Even lying on the bed, he'd almost broken Hartman's nose the second time. But with a little time, he could break Wake down, give him proper direction. Wake was easily the most promising subject he'd had. Well, since Tom, really. Sleep well, Alan, Hartman whispered with a smile. Let me take care of you. He sniffed hard to clear his throbbing nose, swallowed blood, and barely tasted it. <sighs> Barry? Barry! Let's get out of here. Can you open this gate? Maybe. Barry. Uh, well, I slammed it shut when the nasty showed up, and the key fits kind of loose in the lock, so, uh... Barry? Barry! I'll find it! Don't worry about it! Barry! Barry. I'm on it. I'm on it. Come on, I'm dodging. God damn it. Why don't you freaking move? Yeah, I get it. Skip it. Okay, Hurry let's up, get Barry. you all together. I'm on it. I'm on it. Hi. Come on, now, seriously. Stop at me. Falls. Come back soon, sign. We're going to the Anderson farm. I knew you were gonna say something like that. <coughs> you know what? You owe me big time for this. When this is through, if we make it, I don't care what anybody says, I'm done with darkness. You're gonna buy me a tanning bed as a gift, and I'm gonna live in it. <laughs> we still need to find Alice. I'm 
crazy, but that's fine, Barry. <laughs> oh, you got that right, Al. You're barking mad. You are by far the craziest... But maybe that's inevitable when you deal with crazy stuff like this. It helps. This is happening, Barry. Alice... They never had Alice. She's trapped in the darkness at the bottom of the lake, but she's not dead. Al, how can you know that? I know, Barry. I can... Al, I... No, listen. I can bring her back. I can find her. There's something special about this place. The lake, it, it does something to the works of art created here. It makes them come true. But there's a catch. The dark presence, whatever that thing is, twists it to its own ends. That's why all of this is happening. It's using my manuscript to take over everything. Al, I believe you. It happened to Thomas Zane before. It happened to the Andersons. I believe you. Crazy or not, you're not delusional. Weird shit's going down. That's a fact. I'm on board, man. I'm with you. The Andersons knew about it, but they were too far gone to tell me with all the drugs they were on. But they wrote it down. There's a message somewhere at their farm, Barry. We just need to find it. Look out! How does yelling look out help? You either break or you say strap in, hold on to something. God damn it, I'll talk to me! Help your knee. I had lost my gun in the crash. <laughs> Great. Mary was nowhere to be seen. Flashlights. Oh, there's something moving down here. Find lights. Barry, it's a take it. Use a flare, Barry. Oh, yeah. Barry, are you all right? <laughs> I'm good, Al. I'm great. Guess you never messed with anyone from New York City before. Huh? <laughs> you never messed with anyone from Hoboken before. Barry, Great. just wait for me, okay? Ow! I'm not staying here! It's suicide! I'm going to the farm! I'm gonna go ahead and secure the area! You can catch up! Don't worry about it! I'm on the case! Now he's Rambo. <laughs> this would turn into a disaster if I didn't catch up with Barry. Yeah, we're moving, we're moving. We need a light. Give me something. Okay. When he stopped the car at the Anderson farm, Walter felt relieved. Oblivion was close at hand. The brothers wouldn't miss a jar of moonshine or two in the booby hatch. But then he saw the man on the porch, and he knew who it was. Driving for his life and knowing it was useless, he didn't realize he was crying until he couldn't see the road for the tears. <sighs> Okay. Gun, flashlight, anything. Anything else you want to throw at me?
Get the Thomas! Get lost! Destroy them to get through. Get it over there. And I'll find the power. Agent Nightingale stared at the passed out rider. The man was sleeping off one hell of a night. Nightingale felt a stab of envy at Wake's oblivion, but he had a job to do. He put the gun to Wake's head and almost became a murderer. His hand shook and his throat felt tight and dry. Biting his teeth, he tried again to pull the trigger. He lost the nerve. Wake stirred. Nightingale would have to settle for an arrest. I hope there'd still be a working generator somewhere around here to power up the old lights by the gate. Okay, so what's over there? Just a blocked out shaft? Okay. I could sense the movement in the woods ahead. Facing the enemy without a weapon was dangerous, but I had no choice. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this flashlight. Come on! Come on! Come on! Coming to the light, assholes. I need a freaking gun. Run, Alan, run. A car was driving away from the farm, headed in the same general direction as I was. For all I knew, it was Barry, caught in the consequences of leaping before looking. Probably not. 
Hopefully yes, probably not. Ooh, the heavy duty one. No, you got no ammo, batteries, just a thermos. The car was heading for the cabin up ahead. It wasn't far. If it was Barry, I would see the damage soon. Is that the witch's cabin? Who the hell are you? I had seen glimpses of the light before. I had seen it in my dream. It was a strange spaceman or a diver in a bulky suit. He was the one who'd been placing the pages on my path. The dark presence followed the choreography laid out to it in the manuscript, growing stronger and stronger, moving like a storm from one scene of destruction to the next but it was still bound to follow the story and chained to the dark place it came from. When the story reached the end it longed for, it would finally be free. That's why they wanted to finish it. Okay, I know that one. Some safety. Pick up the damn shotgun. Someone had left a gun behind. Now I had a fighting chance of reaching the farm. The Taken are filled with darkness. Yep, yeah, I know. <laughs> the storm raged on as the Anderson brothers walked unsteadily away from the clinic with the other patients in tow knowing that this time they wouldn't return. The darkness around them seethed with horrors, but Tor and Odin were unafraid. Their eyes glinted with guile. They knew every secret path, and there was blood on their hands. They had fought these shades before. Nope, stay away from me. Nope, I'm going away. Can I get them to step in the traps? Nope, they don't fall for traps.
Come on, leave me alone. I could see the car, but there was no sight of the driver. Yeah, also, how do you explain mechanically, thematically, that I'm getting healed by lights? Hello? Anybody here? Barry? Barry! No! Danny, you're not! Please! Walk faster, oh, dammit! What are you? What are you? Ah, no! Don't! I'm sorry! Ah, 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 ah. <sighs> That's not how you open a door. Oh. I know you. You were in jail the other day. I went to the farm again for the moonshine you know it makes you see they're they're not gonna miss it they're in the loony bin my buddy danny i lost him something's gone wrong with him it's not him like a real bad follow-up to a real good movie the best friend's suddenly bad guy who who wrote this crap anyway. Probably me. I've run through every possible course in my head. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story. And it's going to kill her, and me, and everybody in this town. No one will survive. Darkness will consume everything. This is what it's wanted all along. It will be free, unstoppable. It used Alice to get to me, dangled her in front of me to keep me going. It was never going to release her. I'm going to change this. I'll escape. I've written myself into the story. I'm now the protagonist. This feels like a terrible risk, but yeah. it's the only way to save Alice. I'll be bound by the events of the story just as much as anyone else who's been woven into it. The story must stay true for this to work. There have to be victims along the way, near escapes, cliffhangers. In a horror story, it can't be certain that the hero will succeed or even survive. He almost has to die. I'll write my own escape into the story next. I need help. Zane's going to be the one who will help me. I'll make it happen. Yeah, horror stories and in one of three ways. Let me guess. Danny, huh? Hang on. Yeah, so they end in one of three ways. The hero wins, the hero loses, the hero is the monster. The front door was locked. Okay, let's leave through the window. Climb out through the broken window. Okay, let's do it. The farm was still a good distance away. I'd need a car to get there fast. Good thing we have one. For a moment, Hartman considered strangling the idiot. Mott was mean-spirited, but easily manipulated. An emotional infant who lived for his approval. Wake, by contrast, was a far more difficult subject. Mott had given him too much leash. In two days, who knew what could happen? Hartman would have to find a way to rein him in, and quickly. Nothing else here? 
Nein. No rewarding of exploration. There's a basement. And there's something in the basement. Wait, wait, wait. Aha. Um, that's not a pretty sight. Awesome. Give me, give me the flashbang. Does this lead anywhere? Let's walk and roll. If he wasn't up here, he was probably in trouble down at the farm. For a moment, I felt bad for doubting him. After all, I made it this far myself. But Barry was Barry. Hmm. <laughs> Barry was Barry. Barry was definitely Barry. This car walks. Excellent. Now I'm heavily armed. Ah! What the hell? The problem is that with this I have 13 ammo, and with this I have 5. No, I have enough. Okay. Well, as I'm sure everyone's noticed, that storm we all felt coming is finally here. The boys at the Weather Service reckon it'll last until morning at the very least. Uh, pertaining to that, let me uh, read that missing persons alert again. The sheriff's department still looking for a Caucasian woman, 30 years old, slim and blonde with blue eyes. She may be lost in the woods, and it's possible she's been injured in a car accident. If you see her, please make sure you get her indoors and call the sheriff. It's bad weather to be caught out in, so if you see someone in the area who maybe looks a little confused, give him a hand, all right? The waitress. This is Pat Main on KBF FM. Hoping you're all safe and warm tonight. Not tonight. Tonight we make a stand.
to a good shot, and it's down. This looks nice. Let's take this. Fight you with Carl. Wait, I can increase, concentrate the beam of the car. Okay, guess we're walking from here. Start throwing hay bales at me. The wolves. Ow, ow. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Come on. I'd known the brothers used to be some kind of rock stars, but it hadn't really sunk in until I saw the stage. Oh, yes. Ow! Run! They got me! There's too many of them! Very no! God damn! Rock on! I'm so glad you decided to go it alone, Mr. Bronson. Shut up and shoot! Ow! We have to fight him off! 
I can set off more of the fireworks from here and help you out! Hey, Al! Did you notice there's a lot of ammo and stuff around? This place is stopped! Al, hold on! I'm trying to get the stage lights on! Ooh, there's a more heavy duty. Ah! Move, damn it! Move! Yes! Here we go! Barry Wheeler to the rescue! No! Oh, damn it! Goddamn turn of the century wiring! Hang on, Al! I'll get the working again, I promise! That's a shotgun. Move, damn it, move. Fix it. Please, please, please. Fix it. This is really cool. I love it. Ow. Except when they hit me. Ow. Please don't let me die here. Are we good? Oh yeah! Uh, did you mean to do that? <laughs> Can just duck under it? Come on. Hi, Barry. Are you armed? See, bestseller? No reason to worry. Your cutout's good as new, right where I left it. I'll come back for it once we have the place secured. You're insane. Yeah, that's been my biggest worry all this time. Mm-hmm. Here has something to say. Uh, what's that, Al? Ooh, I'm Alan Wake. I'm always right about everything. And if I don't get my way, I'm sunk all day long. I'm always intense and moody. It makes me very attractive and mysterious. 
Right now, I'm just standing here because I need my best friend Barry to carry me. But that's okay. I can just take him for granted. Are you done? I think I see what you did there. Yeah, it was pretty good. You want me to do my imitation of Barry Wheeler? No? I thought so. Wow! <laughs> you look at that thing, Al! They really went all out with this Viking crap, didn't they? Look at all this stuff! They must have done okay for themselves, so how come I never heard of these guys before? And this from the guy who learned about Ozzy Osbourne through reality TV? Sleep. We all spend oh, a third of our night dreams spring. in a soft embrace, Man. somewhere it's between fantasy and hey, oblivion. Hey, remember when I got you that gig? But your first are real writing job, what got you started? Ooh, is this one or of your episodes? Versa. In Night Springs. Tonight's episode, The Dream of Dreams. Eh, that's by someone else. <laughs> We join Mr. Jones as he explores the endless dreamscape, only to be brought to a sudden stop by a decidedly mundane situation. A long line of people. Hey, Jones, right? Listen, we're gonna have to wait until his highness over there is good and ready. Oh, wow, who's that? You don't know him? What are you, you? He's the guy dreaming us. Well, not just us. He dreams everything. All of this. But, wait, no. I'm the one who's dreaming... I'm asleep. Isn't... isn't this my dream? Oh, yeah. Sure. Get real, pal. You're just another dream. I'm a dream. You're a dream. The weirdo in the diving suit is a dream. And the girl made of smiles and sunshine is definitely a dream. But I'm pretty sure I'm dreaming this. Well, maybe you're a really confused dream. What am I, a shrink? All I know is I'm going with the smart guys. And they say that's the guy doing the dreaming. Right there. I don't know what that means. It means we keep him happy. No sudden falls. We make sure he has his clothes on when he goes out in public. No chases where the monster is nipping at his heels and he runs like crazy, but his legs don't seem to get him anywhere. None of that. Because if he wakes up in a cold sweat... Oh... Yeah, precisely. So we wait till he wants to move on. Keep things nice and calm. Hey, something... Something's happening here. Yeah? What's that? What? Can't you hear that? Oh, God help us. It's an alarm clock. Oh, it's you, isn't it? Please, man. I got a wife and kids. Please don't wake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the fact that I'm picking up Thomas's, like, stay awake. There has to be a ladder here, so oh. Right. It's nineteen seventy six. Madness reigns at the Anderson farm. Contrary to all logic. The headiest ingredient of their moonshine is unfiltered water from Cauldron Lake. The Andersons feel like gods. Odin can't stop laughing. He contemplates cutting his eye out. Tor runs across the field, naked, shrieking, hammer in his hand, trying to catch lightning. Their songs have power. Something ancient is stirring in the depths, coming back. The Viking boat looked imposing. Almost like a battering ram. Yeah, they did well for themselves. Well, let's use it as a battering ram, huh? The Old Gods of Asgard 1975 Ragnarok Tour. Be awed by celestial wrath and fury. <laughs> cool. Let's make sure Barry's not dead, okay? I'm all full up on batteries now. Yeah. 
Get away from me, you punk. Okay. Why can't we have just gone around the barn, like up a fence or something? So fun. Children of the Elder Gods... <sighs> How the hell did you get there? Why weren't you attacked? Wow! Those geezers had quite a production going on. Ugh. Ooh, you know what, Al? If we make it through this alive, I'm gonna start representing them. Yep, sell this stuff online, maybe get a reality show going, release a new single. Good luck with that, pal. Hey, you find us a way out of here, okay? I'm gonna take a closer look at this The door was barred stuff. from the other side. I'd have to find another way. I hear the steps up. Here's the door. Well, that's how you open the door. Be careful, Al!
good. Keep your eyes open, okay? Everything's okay. Everything is cool. Of course I have to climb the ladder. As you regular listeners know, I tend to work through the night, but I'm not the only one. Deputies Mulligan and Thornton are taking a couple of moments off their busy schedule to join me here in the studio. Boys, how busy are you now? Deerfest is almost here, isn't it? I, I bet that keeps you in business. The elevator was dead. I'd have to get some power to it first. Which concerns an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that, Thornton. I wasn't gonna say anything. I was just saying we got, you know, other irons to fry. And how would you compare your workload to last year's? Things have seemed relatively peaceful to me, but people do tend to get a little wild this time of year. Oh, it's wild, Pat. It's pretty wild. There's been all sorts of trouble this year. Vandalism, fighting, public disturbances. A lot of people gone missing, too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the <laughs> usual stuff, Pat. Uh, just, you know, a, a lot more of it. I could see the building that had to be the Andersons' home on the other side of the field. It wasn't far now. I wasn't worried about trusting the ramblings of two burned-out geriatric wrecks. They had the goods. Don't you run away from me. the silo okay Okay, cool. Nothing. So, what, well, how, when?
How do you expect me to do what? The ladder, of course. with you in a second. Ah, uh, Al? Is that you out there, buddy? I had to find a key to get Barry out. Oh, yeah, it's it. me. Hang on. I'll try to find a key to get the door open. Okay. Hey, watch the holdup. Come on, this place is all dusty. You know I got my allergies. This place is huge. Come on, Al, open the door already. Seriously, I don't like it in here. Hey, let's go, man. Relax, Barry. Oh, and suddenly this opens. I think we're gonna have to work together to open this gate, Al. Looks pretty heavy. Uh huh. Hey, I think that's the farm on the other side of the field. We're almost there. This farm is a crazy place for crazy people. We should feel right at home then. Yeah. Valhalla. Come on, one more gate. Let's do this thing. I want to see your flashlight, goddammit. Yeah, they went all out with the Viking shit. The lights are out. I guess we better check the fuse box. The power downstairs was out, but I was sure I could fix that at the fuse box. Rockets. Let me guess. Downstairs. Okay. Move, Barry. Move. <laughs> Let me do my thing. Ooh, two thermoses. How do I go downstairs? Barry, move! God damn it, move! Where is the down? You know, this place looks kind of lived in. I thought the Andersons were in the booby hatch. All gods know the truth. Come on, Al, let's get the lights on, huh? Nice axe. Again, Alice's screams rang in the stillness of the night. I saw myself run toward the cabin, flashlight in my hand. I followed my past self. I was an out-of-body observer, a time traveler in a crazy drunken dream. This was the beginning, the night Alice had disappeared. The mystery of what had happened during the missing week was about to reveal itself. The night, there's really a the night gone man with the night. Can you hear that, Al? Music? Yeah, of course. Sounds like Pete. We need to find where it's coming from. That's the message the Andersons talked about. That's the whole reason we're here. Lady of the Light? Oh, that's gotta be... What's your face? The crazy lamp lady from the town. Cynthia Weaver. Right! Must be! Now to see a love set free 
You will need the witch's cabin key. Find the lady of the light gone mad with the night. That's how you reshape destiny. Okay. We need to find Cynthia Weaver. We'll stay here for the night and head back to town as soon as it gets light. Hey Al, lots of hours before dawn. Might as well get some rest. And by rest, I mean drunk. Come on, Barry, this is... Yeah, what the hell. I'm gonna stick by you, no matter what, ever, Al. Sure, like a brother. I'm a writer, goddammit. Correct. Help if I just wanted to, I could write ten books a year. And and they'd be the best books that year. No, you couldn't. They wouldn't be the best. That's right, I couldn't. But I could, because I'm a writer. What? What are they putting this stuff? I feel like my brain is coming out of my nose. <laughs> I'm gonna get the recipe off of those coots and be a, a, a booze millionaire. <laughs> I just miss her, Barry. I just want her here with me. I know, I know. But it's gonna be okay. We're gonna make it okay. That's how you reshape destiny. <laughs> Are we still in chapter four? crazy drunken dream and yet it was more than that it was the truth a suppressed memory unearthed by the anderson's moonshine i was there an out-of-body observer this was the night alice and i had arrived at bright falls the night alice had disappeared i had a chance to find out what had happened i remembered being surprised alice? to see the alice? cabin dark alice would have never turned the lights off I remembered thinking, I caught a glimpse of her form underwater, sinking into the darkness. Beyond this lost memory, there was nothing. I had to follow the footsteps of my past self to find out what had happened that night. Diving after her was the last vague memory I had of that night. After that, the next thing I could remember was waking up behind the wheel of the crash car and finding the first pages of the manuscript. I couldn't find her in all that blackness. I must have thought she drowned. Alice! Jagger had Alice, Alice. and so she had me. Alice! I'd been easy prey. Look at the cabin. Is there someone in the window? What? Alice? Maybe she didn't drown after all. Maybe she's inside. Alice! Yes. The dark presence had touched me. She had dug her nails into my brain and used me. Made me her puppet. be here somewhere maybe upstairs in the study alice yes that's where she is you can apologize alice you'll laugh at the whole thing together and put it alice? behind you 
She's not here. You were foolish to think so. No, she's dead. She drowned. No, no, no! It's your fault your wife is dead. You are guilty. All she wanted was to help you right. You killed her. Ah! Oh, hush. There's still hope. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Here, you have the power to change things. She wanted you to write. I will tell you what to do. You can write her back. The story will come true, and all will be well again. She had Alice, and the manuscript was the ransom for her. Yes. All right. I'll fix it. I'll bring her back. No. I wrote it. I remembered it all now. In the dark, I'd written for days, a week, almost a complete manuscript of a novel entitled Departure. Jagger had been my editor, whispering in my ear, making sure that the unfolding story would make her more and more powerful. I thought I was saving Alice. Even with the cobweb she put in my head, some part of me had been aware enough to write my escape into the story, to bring a light into the cabin to release me before I could finish, to interrupt the horror story before the ending, where darkness consumed everything and everyone. Zane was weak, and far away, but I had written him into the story, and his light had been enough to set me free. It isn't here now. I'm here because it was written. I brought the light to set you free. You must hurry. You will know I will hear. It will be back soon. It stole the skin of my heart a long time ago. She looked so old. up, confused and groggy, my mind consumed by darkness and fear. All I could do was to escape. The week spent in the cabin had taken its toll. I was barely conscious and fading fast. to have cost Zane terribly, thrown him even deeper into whatever dark place he now haunted. But he had managed to weaken the dark presence, kept me safe that night. But you really shouldn't have been driving. That's right, James Joyce. It's your fault, and you're gonna pay for it. And I love Boats of the Fall, and this is awesome, but I'm gonna cut it here and hope I don't get flagged. So, till next time, stay good, have fun.